So whether you have completed or are getting close to completing the campaign, or are actually already experiencing some of Diablo 4's endgame offerings, after doing a bunch of research and testing, here are some top cutting edge tips for progressing through the mid and end game of Diablo 4 for you to not only enter and cruise through World Tier 3 to get into the actual end game with World Tier 4, but also getting through things extremely efficiently, not wasting much time at all, and more importantly, having the most fun possible. So first, I'd like to just briefly touch on the Capstone Dungeon, which is the objective you have to clear first before being able to gain entry into Nightmare Difficulty. And without getting into any major spoilers, in case you really want to experience this dungeon for yourself, just upon clearing the campaign, if you're relatively close to level 50, for example, I was able to clear it as a level 47 character, you should have a chance of clearing the Capstone Dungeon. But here's an easy way to gauge whether or not you are strong enough. And first of all, in terms of your gear and specialization, you'll want to just have a build that is sort of a preliminary one of an endgame build, as in you might have a couple of legendary powers that lend towards that specific endgame build, but obviously not all of them are required to be able to clear this dungeon. So you should have some decent legendary aspects going, as well as some decent bears, especially your weapon should be of a relatively high level, and you can even consider upgrading it once or twice. And of course, before you attempt this dungeon, you definitely want to hit up the alchemist first to not only make sure that your healing post has been upgraded to the highest level that it can be, but also craft elixirs to use in a dungeon in case you haven't already been using elixirs. And for this, you'll want to get attributes that are good for your build. For instance, with Pulverize, I like Overpower. And then the Elixir of Undead Slaying should also be helpful for the second half of the dungeon in case you're struggling there. And lastly, once you've fulfilled all these soft requirements, a way to easily gauge your relative power and whether you can actually successfully complete the entire dungeon is to just base your performance on or benchmark your performance against the first few monster packs or sort of the first zone of the dungeon, right? After which, if you think you're not strong enough, you can just leave the dungeon and just go power up a bit. So what I specifically mean here is if you get through the first few monster packs, and are able to kill them with relative ease, maybe have a tiny bit of trouble, you know, burn through a few health pots. But after a few packs, if you are able to come out of it still relatively capped on your health pots, then I would say that you are strong enough to complete the entire dungeon. But if you find yourself still struggling, you can definitely go and power up first. And the way I would recommend you do so is by farming up some of your renown, shoring up your renown across the zones, especially ones that are close to leveling up, or also doing a few dungeons if you need to add a few useful legendary aspects to your build. And now another thing I need to quickly mention is that even before entering Nightmare Difficulty, once you clear the campaign, you'll get this quest line to visit the Tree of Whispers, which activates the so-called bounty system or world quest system of Diablo 3. But for this, even for the intro quest, if it's possible, I would definitely save any bounties for Nightmare Difficulty, because it is only upon entering World Tier 3 that you're going to be able to get Nightmare Sigils that'll be used to open Nightmare Dungeons, right? If you do any bounties, if you turn in any Whispers of the Dead before World Tier 3, you won't get such a reward, and thus it'll be kind of a time waster if you don't hold off on the Whispers until then. And now upon completing the Capstone Dungeon, you'll get a quest that'll prompt you to go and activate World Tier 3 or Nightmare Difficulty. And with that, congratulations because you'll basically be able to access all the endgame offerings, activities that is, that are available in Diablo 4. Save for, I suppose, the end uber boss that'll be the culmination of everything. And subsequently, right upon entering World Tier 3, you'll also get a new quest that'll explain what Hell Tides are to you. And with that, the main activity you want to prioritize within World Tier 3, among the few things that you can do, are in fact Hell Tides. But not just Hell Tides, but stacking Hell Tides with as many other objectives as you can. But first of all, Hell Tides are essentially timed events that will spawn in a certain random zone that are not up all the time, but are actually up quite frequently. 
And for that, I'll also link a helpful Helltide Tracker website for you to be able to see whether one is up. But again, if you're in-game a lot, you'll see Helltides actually be up a lot as well. And there will be an announcement in-game when that happens. And essentially for these, in that zone, there will be more monsters that will spawn. And when you kill these monsters, you collect a special currency called Cinders, which when you collect enough, you can actually spend on various chests with each chest containing a different specific type of gear such as one specifically for gloves or for weapons or amulets and so on and so forth. There's also an uber chest so to speak called the mystery cache or the mystery gift which will be the main cache that you want to hunt for but is a bit rare. But fortunately thanks to the Diablo 4 community, there's actually a reddit post and a subsequent wowhead post that details the current known locations of these gifts of mysteries within Helltide zones. So I'll link that below for your reference as well, although it is still in progress, but I did find success with it, as in I was able to find a gift of mysteries based on one of the locations in the Fractured Peaks that was indicated by that map as one of the possible spawn points. And of course, if your timer is running a bit short, or you just don't really need the gift of mysteries, although I would definitely suggest it as it has a much higher sacred um, legendary drop rate compared to the other caches. This one I'm showing here actually dropped two of them. This is an amulet cache, but there are also some that I haven't gotten any legendaries from. Anyhow, looking for other types of caches is of course fine if you prefer that, especially things like heavy weapon caches if you want to upgrade your weapon, which I've already done here, so that's why I'm seeking other types of caches. And for instance, if you also want to hunt, say, offensive legendary aspects, you can go for ones for like gloves or rings that besides offensive aspects can also spawn resource generation aspects. And for some other quick tips to help you optimize and streamline your Helltide experience, first of all, whenever you locate a chest that you like within the zone, although it will show on your minimap what that chest is, um, unless it's armor, it'll just say armor and not like the specific type of armor. But anyhow, my tip here is that you can actually pin the chest on your minimap or on your map whenever you see it so that you can actually return to it later in case you want that specific type of piece, right? And by the way, to utilize such a pin, you simply have to right click any location on your map, which once you reach it, it'll dissipate. Or you can click on the pin again to, to make it go away, or you can click on another location or right click on another location to set a new pin. And needless to say, this has been an extremely useful feature in Diablo 4, especially since there is no overlaid map similar to what we had in the previous Diablo installments. And another quick tip that I have for you is to spend your cinders as soon as you have enough for whatever chest you're targeting, right? Ideally, you would want to again target that mystery chest which costs 175 cinders, but some of the other ones will be cheaper. And this is particularly important because if you die in a hell tie, you actually lose half of your cinders, so you definitely don't want to die. And secondly, of course, because there's also a timer, so you obviously want to spend your cinders and get the chest you want before that runs out. And now besides opening chests and upgrading your gear and collecting legendary aspects in Helltides, which by the way, with the higher item power sacred item tier that unlocks with Nightmare difficulty, you should be getting some significant power spikes. But yeah, another important reason to prioritize Helltides, at least in Nightmare difficulty, is that there are a lot of rare materials that only spawn in hell ties, namely the fiend rose here which is used to reroll or enchant legendary items at the occultist and then there's also another very important rarer material that you'll surely be using extensively once you enter the highest difficulty later on called forgotten souls and these actually have the highest chance to be farmed or dropped from the mystery cache which is yet another reason to target that mystery chest if you can find one aside from the increased drop rates, but they can drop from some of the other chests and bosses in Helltides as well. Now for yet another very important tip for Helltides, although this may not be up every single time there is a Helltide, and that is to stack Helltides with not only the Tree of Whispers Whispers, which are like the bounty world quests, but also anything that also gives you renown contributing to that zone, such as Altars of Lilith, which you can also track using 
Altars of Lilith's maps that you can find online. I'll actually link an interactive Diablo map that'll detail every Altar of Lilith's location. I personally like to use paint, I'm old fashioned like that, to track my Altars of Lilith. I would cross off any that I find. But anyhow, you want to stack as many of these things that are convenient while the Helltide is still going on, right? Ideally, the again, Tree of Whispers Whispers, which basically I only do if there is a Helltide or within a Helltide or in a PvP zone, which I will talk about briefly later on. And besides just killing monsters in Helltides and doing your Tree of Whispers or side quests or other renowned objectives, you can also do events which are like the timed local events in that zone, which will also give you, alongside its usual rewards, more cinders for your Helltide chest openings. And lastly here, I would not recommend doing any cellars or dungeons within a Helltide zone because those don't actually give you any cinders. And I also believe that strongholds are generally disabled during Helltide, so you don't have to worry about those as well. And so with that, if we're talking about a tier list of the best activities to do, at least in World Tier 3. I would say that especially if there are also whispers and even renowned objectives like side quests in the zone, Helltides are definitely going to be the best. But of course, there can be personal exceptions based on preference or, for example, if you actually really need something for your build, such as a specific dungeon aspect that will make or break your build, or if you need to farm some glyphs from Nightmare Dungeons desperately because you didn't happen to get any from any of the other sources, since glyphs seem to drop pretty frequently in Nightmare Dungeons. But with those exceptions and disclaimer out of the way, the second best activity you can do, I would say, are still Helltides without the Whispers stacking. Because they can still be really good, again, for all the aforementioned reasons, even if Whispers don't happen to spawn in the same zone, or perhaps because you've already completed some of the Whispers in that zone earlier. However, aside from Helltides without the Whispers, another very viable alternative in my opinion and preference is actually Fields of Hatred. And actually, there's going to be a specific strategy with this, which is splitting your time between fields and hell tides if there happens to be a hell tide. Now I don't know if anybody else has recommended this, but I'm pretty proud of myself for, I think, coming up with this. Which is, first of all, fields of hatred, which are the PvP zones, in case you didn't know, are actually extremely efficient for doing the whispers. Because a lot of the whispers within Fields of Hatred actually grant a lot of grim favors, which are the currency used to build up your whispers bar, which when it's full, you'll be turning that into the tree of whispers to collect your cash, right? And so the Fields of Hatred whispers are especially quick and easy for that purpose, as long as you're not constantly being camped or killed by other players, that is. And in particular, the whisper that has you purifying your seeds of hatred which are the special currency that drop in the pvp zones that can then be after purification used to purchase cosmetics as well as gamble for gear that purification event often comes with an associated whisper which after completion grants you three whispers and is usually really really easy to do or really really quick to do again as long as you're not being contested by other players which in my experience so far there really hasn't been that many hostile players within fields of hatred in fact you can actually not have to opt in to PvP in the fields, and you'll also even encounter players, or you should at least encounter other players that are actually helpful and not hostile, and will help you kill monsters in there to help make things even more efficient, or even help you kill some of the mini bosses in there for some sweet drops. And with all of that explained, it's time to get back to my strategy that I'm so proud of regarding how and whether to split Fields of Hatred when there's also a Helltide going on. Of course, when there's no Helltide, I would definitely personally prefer to go to Fields of Hatred or do some other stuff like round out some of my renown. But if a Helltide happens to be live when there is a Field of Hatred, first of all, the strategy is based mostly on the fact that a lot of players are sure to be gravitating towards the Helltides, right? Because these are timed events, which means there will very likely be fewer players in the Fields of Hatred that will be contesting you, right? Which makes it a really good time, especially when a Helltide first spawns, to quickly teleport over or run over to a Field of Hatred to knock off some of these easy whispers to get those out of the way first. And then this should leave you even with enough time in a Helltide to then go back and do your chest hunting and cinders collecting if you still desire to do so. 
And now moving over to the next activity in our tier list, we have showing up renown and basically completing and finishing up each zone's renown, starting with doing the ones that are closest to the next level so you can get a quicker power boost, as well as completing all the strongholds in each zone because strongholds award the most renown and unlock other perks like dungeons and waypoints. Of course, we can't forget the altars of Lilith, which contribute to renown and give you stat boosts, and you should definitely track the Altars of Lilith with like a third party website or I like to use Pay as I mentioned. And side quests can be good as well, although they're more optional. You probably don't have to do all of them. And of course, as before, if you can stack them with Whispers, that would be a lot more ideal too. Next real quick, and something that should probably be the real first priority on this list even before Helltides, and that is world bosses. But currently there isn't really a clear idea about how often they spawn. Again, I'll link a timer tracking webpage below that you can check out. And of course you get an announcement in-game when you happen to be in-game for it. But they're extremely important to do not only for their drops, but you also get like a weekly cash. And the main reason that world bosses are so important and should be prioritized is the fact that they drop scattered prisms, which is an extremely rare and important resource that you need to use to add sockets to your items. And speaking of timed periodic events, there's also another one called Gathering Legions, which you'll likely have seen pop up on your map a few times already. But in my experience, this doesn't seem to be the most rewarding, especially for the amount of time it takes to complete it and not counting like travel time and things like that. Although it can be quite an easy activity to do because at least as of now, you'll see a lot of players that go to it and thus making it somewhat of an easy thing to just sit through. Now by now, there is definitely an alpha in the room that I have barely mentioned up to this point and that is one of Diablo 4's key endgame features, Nightmare Dungeons. But I actually have a good reason for that, which is that they're really not that important or efficient for Nightmare difficulty, and will then become a lot more of a core activity, probably even more so than Helltides, when you enter the final world tier torment. And a couple of reasons for this is, first of all, one of the main rewards that you get from completing Nightmare Dungeons is Glyph EXP for leveling up your Paragon Glyphs on your Paragon board. However, at the lower tiers, which you can really only realistically do when you're level 50 plus and 60 plus, these are really inefficient for Paragon Glyph EXP. And some other reasons include while you're still fresh into Nightmare, you'll have very limited choices for the types of or the specific dungeons that you can do as Nightmare Dungeons because you won't have that many sigils. And as you do more Hell Tides with Whispers or Fields of Hatreds with Whispers or Whispers in general and turn in more of those Tree of Whispers um, turn-ins and get more sigils, then you'll have more options that you can then start to target the best ones and so forth and even crafting new sigils with because you'll have the materials by then later on towards Torment difficulty. Plus to unlock sigil crafting at the occultist, you actually need to complete a tier 3 nightmare dungeon, which you basically can't really do fresh into nightmare anyway, and will need to be about level 55 to actually tackle comfortably. So if anything, throughout Nightmare, you can do some Nightmare dungeons here and there, especially if you get some with like useful aspects that you might need, or if you happen to want to get glyphs or more glyphs or a tiny bit of glyph experience just to get that rolling, but I would definitely highly not recommend it until Torment. And again, this is because in case it wasn't super clear earlier, at Torment, you'll be about level 70 plus, in which case you'll be able to do a lot higher tiers of Nightmare Dungeons with like level 20 sigils and onwards because level 20 sigils roughly correspond to level 70 plus. And with those, the Glyph EXP you'll be granted at the end of each dungeon will be a lot more. And thus, this will be a lot better time spent. And speaking of which, and lastly, as for how to benchmark yourself and really prepare to get into the final world tier, tier 4 torment, again you can use a similar benchmarking method that I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video for the first capstone dungeon because you'll be doing yet another capstone dungeon to progress into tier 4 or world tier 4. And generally speaking, you'll want to have each of your pieces of gear be sacred at this point, which again is the higher item level tier of Nightmare difficulty. 
And so with all of your gear as sacred and also you having most if not all the useful legendary powers that you'll need for your build or your endgame build and also especially you want to have a strong weapon at this point, a high level weapon that is also upgraded to near max, you should be able to beat the second capstone dungeon with all of these checked off and being roughly around level 70 or slightly lower. And that'll be all for my guide for the fastest, fun-filled track to torment difficulty after finishing the campaign. Let me know if you found the video helpful in the comment section below or what you think or whether you have additional tips and I will definitely reply to your comments. And with that, thank you so much for watching, consider subscribing to my channel for more cutting edge videos and I will catch you in the next one. Happy hunting. Peace.